that I have all of my stickers in. I have a holiday one, all of my functional stickers, and then all of my regular stickers. I think I'll start with the regular stickers first and show you how I store those. So I use the smaller binders. This is just what works best for me and my storage. I like to color code all of my stickers. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you probably see me organizing them. I use the Ziploc pouches that I got from Staples. This is the Staples brand. They're actually a little larger than the binder size, so I had to cut them down. I just keep all of my loose stickers. I also make these little pouches. They're actually plastic sleeves that I got from stickers, and I just cut them down and washi the sides together. I just find it easier to pull them out, especially if I'm just looking for flags. All the loose ones though, I think it's easier to just throw in there and then I know everything in here is red. I just use the alphabet stickers that I have in my collection to color code the Ziploc bags. I also have these Avery plastic sleeves. I use them to store my bigger stickers. I take a piece of paper and actually washi them to the paper. I just find it easier this way and you can double side it. So I just do that for all of the colors. So all of my loose stickers in a Ziploc pouch and then all of the long stickers in a Avery plastic pouch. I just find this works really well for me. It just makes it easy to go right to the color that I want and they're all together. Moving on to my functional stickers, I'm using the same binder that I use for my regular stickers. So this is the small mini binder. I just find it works really well for me. So the first page I have here are my Etsy stickers. So all of the stickers that I get from Etsy, I have in its own section. So I know exactly who I got these stickers from. So if I need to place another order, then I can do that with no problem. My next section is for chores. This is a little different. I'm using an Avery plastic pocket. These are stickers that I printed out myself, so I just found it easier than cutting them all individually that I cut them when I need them. And the rest of it is just like my sticker book where I use pieces of paper to washi everything down. So one for beauty, also a celebration page for birthdays or anniversaries all of my weather stickers. I have one for leisure, so like popcorn for movies, vacation, game night. I guess this could be entertainment as well. And bath time, of course, I love taking baths. This one here is for appointments. I also have one for health, so even the gym stickers go in there. And then this is a checkbox one. So these are just mini checkboxes. I keep most of my other checkboxes with my color-coded stickers. I also have one for flags, so these are anything that I can use to write on, I keep in the flag section here. And my last section is for all of my lettered stickers, so you can see here I do use letters pretty frequently. And my last binder is for all of the holidays. It's really not perfect, but I'll go ahead and show you how I have it right now. So on the left here, I have some longer Valentine stickers that I need to put away. You can see these are dividers, but <laughs> let me show you. So it is so small, it actually is not useful at all. So I'll probably just take them out. I was starting to washi them and put names on it, but really, like I said, it does not matter. So these sticker sheets are long enough and loose enough just to pull in and out instead of having to washi it to paper. So that is really nice. So I also have some Halloween stickers and of course some Christmas stickers as well. My plan is to use these dividers to actually write down what the holidays are. So um, once I do that, I'll give you an updated holiday binder. I do like these pocket pouches. I think that they're very handy to store like my Christmas washi and extra stickers. I would probably prefer them to be clear if I wanted to use them for my color-coded sticker binder, but for the holiday binder, these work fine for that. So here is everything that I use to make my binder. If you guys want to see how I did it, then just keep on watching. So the first thing that you're going to need is a binder. This is just the small mini binder that I got from Staples. You can see here, I only paid a dollar for this binder, so what a great deal. 
This one also has pouches on the left and right hand side. The next thing I'm using are the Ziploc pouches that I got from Staples. They come three to a pack and I believe they're $3.99 each. So that's a great deal considering that I found some Ziploc bags for $8 for one. I also have these Avery plastic sleeves that I use as well and I believe they're also $3.99 and I think it comes with 10. I'm also going to be using some sticker paper. These are white shipping labels that I got from Staples. I also use these to print my own stickers at home as well. It's a whole sheet and you can just cut them out after you print them out. So very nice and handy if you're looking to print your own stickers. Okay, so I'm just going to show you how I make my side label on my binder. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my sticker paper and mark the width and the length of it. Now I'm going to be using a paper trimmer for this, but if you don't have one, scissors will work just fine. Just make sure that you try and make a straight line. Once you have your strip finished, I like to get out some fun stickers and place a sticker right at the top of your strip. I just find this looks very cohesive when sitting on a bookshelf. And the last thing you'll need are alphabet stickers. If you have nice handwriting though, definitely feel free to draw them yourself. I'm going to use this for all of my washi, all of the flat washi that is. So I've been getting some from the dollar store and then extra little bits here and there. So I think this will be perfect for that. Now you're just going to want to slip it through the slot at the top of the binder. You can just tape this to the binder, which I have done, but I don't recommend it. The ends do get frayed that way and you will have to tear it off and redo it. So this is a better option. And that's it, very easy. If you wanna do the front and back, you can do it the same exact way. Now here's a sneak peek at what I'm putting in the washi binder. So all of my little washi samples that I've collected. I also have my Dollar Tree strips in there for now. If you guys wanna see my larger washi collection, then give this video a thumbs up. I hope you guys enjoyed and found this useful. So thanks again for watching everyone, and I'll see you in my next video, bye. Thank you.